Yes, to start. Yeah, immediately. Can you? Yes. Uh, Professor Kumar, may I go ahead? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's indeed an honor to see all of you, and I'm very glad to welcome our uh, Chancellor, Professor Padmanabhan, out here. Uh, it's very kind of him to have taken the time to be with us uh, today. Um, it's a pleasure to be inviting Professor P. Ramswamy today to the CUTN's uh, third distinguished lecture of our decennial series. Uh, Professor Ramswamy was born in a typically logistically <laughs> village, uh, an agrarian village in the present day Karur uh, district of Tamil Nadu. And he's a first generation learner. He had his undergraduate and postgraduate education in uh, Peria Revere College and Jamal Mohammed College in Trichy and doctoral research from Madras University, where he went on to become a professor in the Department of Zoology, and later the founder professor and head of the Department of Biotechnology. He has had postdoctoral experiences at IISC Bangalore and at Queen's University, Belfast. His research experience has led to a large number of publications in peer refereed journals, books, and book chapters. He has guided many PhDs, both in India and abroad and uh, with his international research collaborators. In addition to research, Professor Ramswamy has a wide experience as an administrator, having been a member of uh, various governing councils of Madras University, and also serving as a chairman for the academic syndicate. As a culmination of his administrative work, he served as the vice chancellor of Algapa University, Karakuri for three years, between 2007 and 2010. He's currently the director of research at Sri Balaji Medical Colleges and Hospitals at Chennai under the Bharat University. He brings this wide experience to talk about the future of higher education, research, and administration in India post COVID 19. I request our officiating Vice Chancellor, Professor Tarta Bhumarve, to give his introductory remarks, followed by the distinguished lecture. Most respected. Chancellor of our university, Professor G. Badmanabhan, is indeed a very rare privilege for us that the Chancellor himself has joined us in the decennial lecture and he shows his abiding interest in the academic activities of the Central University of Tamil Nadu. And I am sure under his dynamic leadership and able guidance, we will be inching the university towards further growth. So, on my own behalf and on behalf of all my colleagues from the Central University of Tamil Nadu, I take this opportunity to extend a very warm welcome to our most respected Chancellor, the Professor G. Badmanabhan. Very good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. And I take this opportunity to extend a very warm welcome, a hearty welcome to my good old friend, Professor Ramasamy, who was my contemporary vice chancellor at Alahapa University. When I was serving as the vice chancellor in Madurai Kamaraj University, Professor Ramasamy was the vice chancellor, successful vice chancellor of Alahapa University. And he was instrumental in the multi dimensional developments of Alahapa University. And for your interesting information, very kind information, the Central University of Tamil Nadu was inaugurated in the year 2009. And for the inauguration of the Central University of Tamil Nadu, myself, in my capacity as the Vice Chancellor of Madurai Kamaraj University, and Professor Ramasamy, in his capacity as the Vice Chancellor of Alagappa University, came to Tiruvarur for the inauguration of the Central University of Tamil Nadu 10 years ago. And at that time, I never knew that I will join Central University of Tamil Nadu as a faculty and then as an officiating vice chancellor. And I never anticipated that I will be getting the rare privilege and opportunity to invite Professor Ramasamy to deliver the designial lecture. So this is how God has uh, uh, planned. And uh, so with God's will, uh, it is a very pleasant occasion for us uh, to meet together in different roles and in different capacities. So that way, as uh, Dr. Madhurima has already introduced, uh, Professor Ramasamy was the founder professor of the Department of Biotechnology. And he was instrumental in establishing 
the postgraduate department of biotechnology at the university of madras and also in most of its affiliated colleges and he introduced innovative programs on those days msc biotechnology msc bioinformatics msc mtech nanotechnology b bsc biotechnology and pg diploma in herbal biotechnology pg diploma in pharmaceutical biotechnology pg diploma in immunotechnology and he also established bioinformatics infrastructure facility for the promotion of biology teaching through bioinformatics under dst fist program so it was to his credit that he introduced many new departments and many research programs in alhapa university such as bioelectronics and biosensors nano science and nanotechnology bioinformatics animal health and management marine biology microbial technology herbal biotechnology mba program through e learning and special coaching for the disadvantaged so on and so forth so that way we have a very seasoned vice chancellor a very right person uh, for our adesenia uh, lecture distinguished lecture to speak on a very right topic a right person at a right place to speak on a right topic namely future of higher education research and administration in india post covid 19 so when i invited him i mean she is very busy schedules he has been very kind enough to honor my accept to honor my invitation and on my own behalf on behalf of the central university of tamil nadu i take this opportunity to convey our profound sense of gratitude to you, sir for honoring our invitation and uh, uh, we are very much uh, privileged to have your expertise to deliver this decennial lecture and coming to the topic of the decennial lecture all of you know the outbreak of corona virus has caused radical changes in the functioning of all aspects of higher education not only in india but across the world there is no aspect of our society which is not influenced by this covid 19 health medicine education business economy are all affected influenced badly by this covid 19 the governments of all countries across the world institutions universities colleges schools doctors experts academicians are all working together on the construction of a new paradigm for the future how we are going to cope up with covid 19 the challenges which we are facing due to covid 19 so that way today the widespread use of technology has become a compulsion for the teachers administrators as well as students so we find some institutions are doing very good work in importing digital education whereas some institutions are not that much successful in their adoption of digital education it is because of a gap in training gap in digital education training so many institutions and many teachers who are not used to digital education so far are now in a compulsion to resort to a new paradigm of learning and teaching so that way we have a very vital problem of training needs in digital education so in many situations what happens is a teacher's lecture is just recorded in the video video form and it is shown as e learning actually e learning is not a teacher presented through video format it is a digital media digital integration or what i can call multimedia integration digital integration of text animation graphics music 
simulation, everything. So the students should be exposed to a multi-sensory learning experiences of seeing, hearing, tasting, I mean, smelling, touching. These five senses are called as gateways of knowledge. So that way, we should be able to provide the multi-sensory learning experiences. And that way, the trend is for today's job, we should make use of today's tool. If we make use of yesterday's tool for today's job, tomorrow we will be out of business. So that way, it is very essential that every teacher, every institution has to do some sort of knowledge packaging in digital communication, like food package. We, ha we have to have what is called knowledge package. So what transpires on internet and some of its most popular platforms in just one minute, in just 60 seconds, in 2019, I would like to give some interesting statistics. In one minute, Google receives 3.8 million searches per minute. In one minute, we have 1 million logins to Facebook in one minute. And in one minute, we have 18.1 million text messages sent. 4.5 million videos are viewed on YouTube. And we find 3,90,030 apps are downloaded from Apple App Store and Google Play Store. And we also find 347, 222 posts are shared on Instagram. 87,500 people tweet every minute. And 188 million emails are sent every minute, every 60 seconds. So that way, 41.6 million messages are sent on WhatsApp. So how many messages are shared in WhatsApp in 60 seconds? Enormous, unbelievable messages of 41.6 million messages. So that way, in the present context, thanks to the compulsion of COVID-19 also, we have to integrate new technology in the new environment for the new teacher who has to deal with a new student. The environment is new, which we never anticipated. For the first time in the history, ever since the Second World War, all the institutions have been closed. Schools, colleges, universities. So every institution, every teacher has a compulsion to teach through online mode whether they are trained or untrained, whether how many of them have resources, how many of them have attitude, how many of them have access, all these issues are there. So thanks to COVID-19, one advantage of COVID-19, I can say, integrating technology has become a compulsion for the teachers. So it is not only the teacher's teaching style which is influenced by the integration of technology, but it also influences the learning style of the pupils. So that way it influences to a radical way. It has brought a revolution in the field of teaching, research and administration. So to, how to make it effective? How to make uh, the changing scenario, the digital scenario an effective one? So for that, I would like to just uh, highlight five important factors. One is we should focus on e-attitude. Attitude of the students, attitude of the teachers, and attitude of the administrators towards e-learning in the COVID-19 period. Second important factor is access, e-access. How many institutions have the required access and how many students have e-access? That is the second important factor in which we have to ponder. And third important thing is e-readiness. How many of our students are ready? And how many of our faculty members are ready? E-ready. And how many of our 
administrators are e ready so that factor also has to be given its due importance and the next one is e safety the adolescent students the teenage boys and girls especially the rural boys and girls they have to be addressed towards the e safety aspects and last but not the least e skills the students should be trained in soft skills as well as hard skills very briefly i will summarize a research study i have conducted in which i have categorized the students into three main categories in which they are falling under three zones danger zone proceed with caution zone and no reason to white zone the results showed that female students 84.19 percentage are more likely to be e ready rather than the male students and the youngest undergraduate students reported higher level of e readiness so the majority of students have e readiness falling neither in the danger zone nor in the comfort zone but within the proceed with caution category so the e readiness score the mean score of the students is just ready above the expected readiness but needs a few improvements so the findings show that the government should pay should pay substantial attention and great effort from the government and institution to assess and ensure the requirements for the students to strengthen their e readiness so that we it is the time that we should also focus on their e maturity e maturity of the students e maturity of the teachers and e maturity of the administrators so we should develop their operational skills information navigation skills social skills creative skills and mobile skills so that way it is very essential that we all should have a collaborative combined efforts to try for new methods and new possibilities to realize the full potentials of digital education in the post covid 19 period so that way i am very happy to see the relevance of the theme of the decennial lecture to be delivered by our distinguished speaker professor ramasamy and i take this opportunity to once again extend him a very warm welcome and before that i would like to request our most respected chancellor professor padmanabhan padmabhushan padmanabhan sir to uh, bless us with his blessing message before the issues lecture i now call upon our chancellor professor padmanabhan friends i i really don't want to take time at this point of time i was very keen to attend uh, dr ramasamy's lecture because i have known him for decades he happened to send uh, some time in my laboratory decades ago uh, he is a leader in by himself uh, in his own science i remember electron microscopy his expertise uh, in various uh, uh, imaging technologies and uh, as dr kumarwell said he is uh, Uh, leadership as an administrator as well so i don't want to take more time i am keen to participate in this talk and it is a pleasure for me to be here thank you so much dr kumar vel and i look forward to ramasamy's lecture thank you sir thank, thank you. you so much sir uh, now i call upon uh, the distinguished speaker to deliver the distinguished lecture Revered Chancellor Padma Bhushan Padma Radha Sir, it's a it's a privilege for me uh, to acknowledge and see you this this day through this uh, Dr. Kapoor Kumar Vel, the officiating Vice Chancellor of the Central University of uh, Trivaru, for giving this opportunity of. Uh, talking on this particular topic future of higher education and research and administration 
and in the uh, uh, post COVID-19. So I think uh, uh, Professor Kapil Kumar Vail didn't mention, I probably forgot to mention, I think the chancellor has mentioned that 30 years ago, I was on the application, I was learning some of the molecular biology work. And um, I think uh, Professor Badnavan fondly called off GP. Um, so it's a great opportunity for me to learn all the technique and move on in my life. Um, um, so, and I, I really thank uh, Professor Kapil Kumar to having given me or invited me to give a talk on the decennial uh, uh, function. 10 years ago, I was also one of the members of the inaugural uh, function uh, through our room. It was uh, inaugurated on the empty building in a uh, Shamiana kind of thing. And um, sir, this has all happened because of the coronavirus. Coronavirus is, um, as a virus in human and animals. Um, I think, you know, people were talking about SARS, MERS, COVID-19, and so on. And today they talk about Wuhan virus, China virus. Um, it's a spherical virus, it's a coated virus, and it has a genome of RNA. Unlike other viruses like, uh, uh, you know, other viruses like uh, smallpox and kind of viruses, they have DNA as a genomic virus. It's easy to control them. Unfortunately, the SARS um, virus, uh, COVID virus, at least 10, seven of them have been identified. Um, you know, like MERS-CoV, SARS-CoV, and SARS-CoV-2, the one, the latest one, is a novel one. Unfortunately, I think all of us, all the scientists all over the world, all the doctors in the world, I think fail to understand what this fellow is up to, what this coronavirus is about, and what kind of treatment. They failed miserably, including you and me. And uh, we don't know how to deal with. Initially, we thought this virus is going to be uh, environmental sensitive, cold. It will not come to India and infect. And we know it doesn't have any racial discrimination, climatic discrimination, or country. It doesn't see, it see only as an animal or human being. So it's a, it's a very, very small genome, about 25, 26 to 32 kilobases long genome. And is able to multiply, it, it goes in, um, in the cytoplasm, it's converted into DNA, many of us know. And unfortunately, what many people forgot to mention, this virus go into the nucleus where it integrates with the chromosome and permanently integrate. Once infected, I think it will stay there. And it's no drug, no vaccine, nothing to treat. So, you know, this is what we know. And we know this is not the only uh, pandemic. World has seen many, many um, pandemics. And the same, you know, as, uh, as coronavirus family. And we have seen in the First World War, I think probably about 50, 50 million people died. Second World War, uh, you know, more number of soldiers died because of this. I think, you know, initially it was um, three to five million people died. Later on, it was 20 to 50 million people died, 10 times. So, so there were epidemics 5,000 years ago and 2,500 years ago. That's a plague of Athens, prehistoric epidemic, and the plague of um, Cyprian, so on. I think, you know, you know, um, you know the, the pandemic, the flu pandemic is all there. So we have never seen a virus which forced all of us to leave before this particular virus. So, you know, we have to think about it. We are isolating. 
um, isolating infected people. We are protecting old, vulnerable, or young. We are trying to improve our hospitals and nurses. So this is the new normality for us. The only way forward for um, the only way for for all of us. I think we need to have a global health system. Ishwar, yeah, that's some problem, right? Okay, the only way forward is we need to have more better global health system monitoring. I think more international cooperation. We need to have global health security. So this is the lesson that we have learned. It's not, I think, you know, not to kill, but cure the infected people. There is no evidence that antibody test being developed is going to be giving a long lasting immunity. We don't have any specific, any specific uh, antiviral drugs or um, anti, you know, uh, antibodies. No cure, no specific medicine. It's a, it's a mixture of, I think every doctor gives a mixture of many, many things. We don't know what the consequences are. I think, you know, uh, people are giving different, different treatment. Um, so we, we, I think we have problem of um, even um, distance, um, social distancing and um, putting face mask. I see people are not scared about it, though there is a warning, warning from all kinds of people. It's not that you lose your taste, smell, and also 62% of the infected people used to have mental health problem. I think that's the nature, one of the papers I think they are describing. So it is it's a very, very bad. It's not only you lose your uh, the sense of smell, taste, and permanently you lose, and also affected people are having mental stress, health problem. So we need to have counseling centers, family counseling and additional support. And that's the area of research. I think, you know, we need to find out what is happening in India. So it's not that, I think, you know, there are a number of people have lost jobs, job prospects, and um, look at only 10% of our, um, you know, uh, children going to school, I think landed up in colleges and university, only 10%. I think, I think the government of India is trying to improve this, improve this, yeah, probably even they are trying for 50%. So this is where I think the educational system has to transform itself in a different, different level. I think Asan did our education system is based on textbook based, I think syllabus based. I think, you know, it's all these uh, border studies, um, uh, departmental uh, committee and uh, academic council, senate, syndicate, all these bodies are making regulations and regulations on the syllabus and the course, course curriculum and all this. These are all for regular type of, um, you know, program, educational program. I don't know. I think, you know, we have closed our colleges and the universities and uh, we, we are uh, somehow, we miss the opportunity of, um, you know, seeing the student, seeing our colleagues, interacting with the faculty. And uh, we, have, we have forced, uh, you know, uh, forced to go for online kind of program. That's what Dr. Kumarvel was talking about. And most importantly, the economy has collapsed. And most of the private colleges and the universities are, I think, you know, they're making money. And I don't know, after making money, they're educating, they're investing. But now, 
would they be able to make enough money to invest back to and are our university system our college system have got infrastructure for this kind of online kind of um, courses education are we ready no not at all are, are our teacher associations are going to agree with this kind of thing no what we are uh, contemplating though we are physically separated though there are about 1 1.5 billion students all over the world only 2% of the people are on online education so as it's no longer it's possible to you know to have our uh, uh, classroom filled with hundreds of students no no way that we can have a, a, a college meeting or university meeting or staff or student meeting can a large scale you need to have physically separated at least about a meter so then if you normally have about 100 students you will you'll be forced to have only 30 students so economically i think you know the kind of uh, thing that we are anticipating is probably is not economically viable the administrators will be thinking about it are we going to all this kind of advice is what uh, um, is that the new models new educational paradigm is what we are contemplating or what is uh, adopted in some of the western countries even 10 universities in our country they are having this online kind of program or a hybrid system of regular plus online of courses so you know so far only a traditional system of education that we had and which has got disadvantages because of the covid-19 problem and uh, it's, it's you know the life is more important than education or employment or anything else so you have to look at the safety of the students safety of the faculty and everyone so you need to have the social segregation a mask and other thing that's the only only readily available technique or technology available prevent to this kind of uh, uh, diseases uh, to be safely so uh, the financing and available infrastructure is going to be a problem for teaching and learning or remote kind of teaching and learning as uh, what kind of uh, short term implications what kind of long term uh, implications and do we really have a solution for all this Uh, a problem of higher education and research and administration and that's questionable i think it is only we are trying to trying to put whatever we had so far we are trying to put them what we practice for two percent of the students we are to bring all those techniques tools and uh, um, the online kind of techniques uh, to mainstream kind of education so it's a new uh, educational paradigm a new world of work new world of organization as everything is new in education however that's the global opportunity as the domestic opportunity for the higher education people to plunge into so so in the long run in the long run anything is possible so we have to work together and bring this so that's the higher education segment is the one which is triggering your learning revolution your learning triggering your learning revolution to happen so universities are distinctive highly mature and you know the students faculty every level of administrators there they are mature enough what is expected of them and they can imbibe and they can handle things very safely and they can move on to absorbing all this kind of technology to navigate new kinds of platform though it's the real challenge for all the institutions can we have the traditional campus based universities to adopt this kind of technologies and approach education okay educating um do we have right kind of technologies approaches and uh, engaging the students in this not really so 
we don't know whether we are going to be successful or a failure so anything can happen as some of the universities like kamsar university in usa they have rethought about all this kind of thing they have rebuilt their undergraduate program and they have used the digital media to provide increased increased access to lower cost lower in the cost and also a selective um program so would this be possible for us to implement in india or not so we um we should think about how we go, we are going to um so um how our universities are going to respond how the online courses are available i can tell you one example what we have done at allahabad 10 years um, 12 years ago we we the mba program in allahabad used to be very popular then we started a e learning program for two years mba program so we made everything online so uh, the students will submit their application will register and um, admissions will be made online fees will be paid online the courses will be uh, hosted online you know all e content all kind of uh, pdf format and um, they are all hosted with uh, all kinds of um, uh, you know youtube programs there what you see today were there on that and um, you know we hosted successfully but one of the problem in that was uh it could not be um you know commercially successful in the sense you know there were parallel programs were running regular program were running where the students have textbooks and uh, they will study write the exam whereas this one periodically conduct the ex the once you read the lessons you have to write the exam the computer will assess the mark and give you the marks immediately so we 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 had the program is doing even the certificate online provided if you are able to pass everything but it's so transparent and the only only the high rate of students could pass you know um, the there won't be any malpractice and uh, kind of thing so when they when you have parallel program this could not be so successful in that so you know only those people who are bright they register they go for this kind of thing and uh, do everything you know whereas um the other people media the people those people trying to copy or those those, those people trying to do mal practice people they never prepare this kind of program so think about it the uh, master's degree is about um, uh, 90 credits and um, yeah three years um, uh, master's program maybe 120 credits um, yeah ug program is 120 uh, credits and 230 credits for integrated kind of program five years integrated kind of program these are all one credit is equal to 15 hours of direct contact hours teaching hours and that includes all kinds of um, you know uh, one credit hour is equal to um, 15 minutes in real time a professor can teach and um, so that means if the course is uh, Yeah, three credits. That means forty-five hours of um, uh, credit hours. So you know, where is the money for this? You may not be able to teach everything what you teach in fifteen minutes in a regular program. An online program it needs hundreds, hundreds of pages of lessons. So you need to write the content with the how to mix with the video, audio, or kinds of flash kind of things so that you make very attractive lessons. this has to be done for each and every college they should have their own platform and um, um you know the the the, the akram council and senate people have to agree with this kind of degree program what we are offering it's not that you know one man decides he go for it otherwise unless the government is going to come here all the people should go into all online kind of uh, mode of learning and teaching um we can blend with online along with regular contact programs here and there but even then 
people disagree with the you know all online kind of program is not equivalent to a regular kind of program so so you have to take whatever the best in the online program you have to in, integrate with the regular kind of program and we can try to impress upon the students the the receiving end of the people are the students already the regular programs and the and the arts and science program already declined the number of en- enrollment what was happening in the campus based program already started declining so we don't know what is going to happen in this kind of uh, uh, you know covid uh, 19 period what was happening last year would it happen this year we don't know so so a uh, lot of uncertain uncertainty so uh, even though you may try to um, you know uh, uh, bring in all kind of technologies um, to the benefit of the students the society uh, we have to we have to teach the students right uh, we have to teach the future of the students future of the community future of the nation depends on the kind of students that we are going to produce so you know the the parents the governments they are going to look at you all the stakeholders of education so so you you have educators you have learners you have policy makers you have the society at large to look at you so all this new education system what we are thinking or talking about it you have to one way or other you have to adapt to digital way so that is a new normal so it's going to be a empty classroom and because of the covid 19 so you know this has impacted every sector of the society it has affected the economy not only education is an exception so we know the students are at home and um, so here up is going to be everything is going to be virtual there's not going to be probably not no physical movement so we have dropped all the you know deferred uh, examination including gre gmat act or at least postponed for the time being so even our uh, entrance examination even ups exams are um, you know is going to be postponed or um, uh, you know something is happening so we are thinking about it digital to being digital uh, uh, digital learning is troublesome so no way we are ready we are not at ready at least not all institutions are ready so we have to prepare ourselves for delivery access information and share our knowledge and probably help learning so adaptive innovative ways of getting education service they has to come so it's adapting adapting digital learning so so we have to curate existing educational content curate existing educational content we have to align with the existing curriculum we have to plan everything is accessible to uh, the the learners so it is going to be a full scale digital transformation at a very very short period of time so it has to be implemented so you have to you have to have advanced technologies the ability to plan the ability to manage and support digital transformation in the education industry we have to help all the institutions focus away from traditional learning models to adapt to digital technology motivate learners and learning experiences we have to get ready the future ready staff and a strategy for the outcome desired outcome that's the new reality so there is no escaping route and this so they you need to have digital tools for delivering educational content 24 hours so you need to have current all the time electricity all the time you should have 
this, you know, computers and uh, other tools associated with this must be available. So technology is going to play a big, big role. So you, you may be able to learn any, any time, anywhere. That is the value of this particular online of kind of, uh, so you're going to have yeah, video broad, broadcasting tools, so video solutions, and you have virtual learning and uh, virtual learning like recording live video, audio, and live video, question and answer chat, and all kinds of mobile applications, websites. So all of them, so you should know how to use any asynchronous learning programs. And um, you have to use the asynchronous link this program. Is, um, is all of them are, um, you know, student focused, is, um, allow learners to complete the course without compulsion of being present in a particular time. And um, so learners can share the idea, feedback, query with the educators and the fellow uh, students. They may not receive an immediate response. That's the only drawbacks of, um, so, uh, so think about the remote uh, village. So will we have a, a facility of this kind of things? No, I don't know. Um, so we have to think about you know, how we are going to build this kind of facility. So some of the applications are Class Dojo, Dreambox, Learning, Google Classroom. These are all some of the um, uh, popular applications that we know. And uh, you may be able to online tests can be uh, made, online assessments can be made. And um, so you would be able to, uh, you know, there's no problem of spread of the disease in this kind of technology. Um, so you, what you're uh, the, uh, the contemplating here is a growth of online pedagogy of various platforms. So this is going to be an automated online proctoring solution. Um, so this automated online proctoring solutions assist educators to create online tests and various formats, including skills, multiple choice questions, essay, um, uh, like typing, uh, even aptitude. On the evaluation front, you have automated proctoring solutions. So it is going to be a uh, institute a multi multi-section window. So that is going to be a evaluation. Empowered video interviews are also possible. So you'd be able to use audio visual analytical things. Input facial recognition technologies are involved. So avoid all the kind of malpractices that uh, one may try to do in this kind of innovative technologies. So you, people are trying to use augmented reality. Augmented reality into education is beneficial for students as well as the educators. So the educator can engage with students in an interactive manner. So, so you have edu educational applications with augmented reality facility. So that includes element 4D, augmented, and um, so in the case of the medical field, so hollow anatomy, hollow lens, this is a kind of program, this is again is augmented reality. So they can a, learn human anatomy in a way otherwise it's impossible. So, you know, these are all, there is another kind of program has been already been developed. It's a neurodigital. So artificial intelligence, virtual reality, and um, the, some other things are machine learning, all kind of things. You know, people have come out with the tablets that can, um, you know, talk to the students and, uh, you know, talk to the educators, talk to the administrators, and you can monitor 24 hours. I think they have come out with some kind of tablets which has all kinds of, um, all kinds of, um, you know, artificial lessons and machine learning and the future transformation. So uh, they, there's a geo-education, um, there are platforms, various platforms are there. Um, so we have to find, the universities have to find solutions 
so to avoid a uh, deepening of the quality of education so that's the only thing people are worried about the kind of uh, uh, you know what kind of education what we are going to uh, give for the people so there are techniques like uh, most popular digital education tools like socratic proragit thinklink and so on um so you know uh, once you go to the website you will find all these kind of tools uh, you need not worry about um, so what i'm trying to tell you the online kind of education you are going to uh, prepare there's one particular um, um program a platform called ken42 k e n 42 uh, it's a platform designed for all kinds of people it is available and it may be uh, modified to suit every institution you think about it and i think you know the ken42 can give you all the universities or the university is going to pay for this kind of facility and help all the educated students it's going to give you a seamless education and delivery and you would be able to manage so uh, give an exam assignment grading experience community network all this kind of is possible as the digital revolution what is happening so even articles to tutorials insights even practical programs all this a kind of things are embedded with this system so uh, so it's going to be it is not going to be same kind of regular class work based kind of teaching anymore is possible unless the teachers are learned most of the teachers have not learned about the uh, the computers or the newer technologies ict and they have to they have to be educated they have to be given all the kind of uh, provisions for them to transform themselves into it specialist and um, already the corporate world and the it sector is in a best place to offer this kind of program maybe universities with the corporate world like um, um, the it solution providers may give you a better situation and the education may, can be improved further so this is the education sector so similarly it's going to be administrators and it's going to be for the people who are going to be involved in the educational sector so whether all of us are going to join together and improve the kind of education that we are offering now or you know depends you know what kind of policies that we are going to sit and to sit together and decide to bring out and give all the universities to take up all this kind of program so uh, it is going to be it's not going to be easy solution for us so the yeah, research is also you know those days i think you know um, i i i know pros badmanag and sir used to have at least 15 to 20 students and many of them post doc students all crowded in small place you know no longer you would be able to see such kind of research program i have no way that i'd be able to see Uh, yeah, researcher like uh, GP, where you will go and interact with them, or the students go and interact with them, get the feedback. You no, know, you have to have uh, space. Uh, in, uh, space is going to be there all the time with the, uh, the the student and teachers, both in terms of teaching, as well as research and also administration. So COVID has brought a disaster for the whole world. It is not. only for education sector and um, it is for all of us all of us we have to wake up and uh, we have to bring in some kind of new technology to give a new uh, solution for this problem and we will take forward um, the education sector i think i hope so whatever i am able to talk to this uh, is beneficial for you thank you very much for your opportunity sir thank you very much thank you thank you sir thank you thank you professor ramaswamy this was a very uh, interesting talk for all of us because it summarized the difficulties that all of us are going through in uh, post covid online education uh, your suggestion for k42 is uh, well taken because uh, at the level of teaching cod and i'm happy to say has uh, implemented moodle as an lms but k42 uh, will take care of administration this is a very good suggestion uh, thank you for the suggestion 
and uh, regarding online um, pedagogy and proctoring what you say is true that there should be a collective policy decision uh, making because the, a lot depends on policies and in the infrastructure investment that the administrators make so i think this is the time for academic administrators to take a stronger role in actually implementing because the teachers have adapted they are teaching online but with very bare minimal uh, support it's time for the administrators to step in and then uh, do their bit to give us more uh, infrastructure so with these words i would uh, hand the mic back to professor sarva uh, kumarave our official vice chancellor for his comments and the closure so thank you sir professor ramasamy sir for your very informative and very authentic lecture i should say and uh, one significant feature of his distinguished lecture is that he made a very technical topic in a non technical manner which will be intelligible to not only to the science faculty but to humanities social science even to the students and scholars so that way i am very glad to inform you sir that your message has reached all the faculty all the students all the scholars and your uh, observations are very well taken and uh, professor ramsami has spoken about uh, some vital issues like health security mental health problems of isolation and stress need for counseling at the family level and at the institutional level and he has very rightly pointed out how we are all missing the opportunities of seeing our own students for a very long time how we are missing our own colleagues and how very tragically some institutions are making money out of the present situation exploiting the situation and prof ramsamy has also very rightly pointed out the need for hybrid system of education in the place of traditional type of education that is what we used to say along with brick institutions and click institutions we should have brick and click institutions institutions which offer both conventional programs along with online programs so the implication for the teachers teachers should be very conversant not only with face to face teaching skills but also with online teaching skills which means they should be thorough not only in pedagogy not only in andragogy but also in webagogy science of teaching through websites and professor ramasamy has very rightly pointed out how life is more important than education and employment all other things have taken a back seat so the implication is that as he has very rightly pointed out our students our teachers as i have pointed out in my uh, introductory address are expected to exhibit some sort of higher level of e maturity e maturity at a higher level is expected from the learners from the teachers and from the administrators and even from the public from the parents from all the stakeholders to absorb themselves and tuning themselves according to the new environment he has very rightly pointed out about the blended learning online programs and he has also pointed out online program may not be equal to regular kind of program and here we used to give a comparison of technology versus teacher and how whether technology can replace a teacher but uh, see uh, i can give one example a country lady without gas stove without mixer without grinder without any technological gadget can prepare a very tasty food whereas another urban lady even with all these technological gadgets can make a confusion and cannot make a tasty food in spite of having all these technological gadgets 
so what we try to say is that technology is a good servant as long as it is a servant it becomes a bad master when the teacher becomes a technology addict technology is your tool to complement and supplement your teacher it is not a rival for teacher it is a tool for empowerment for a teacher so with that we hope to have an empowered teaching empowered learning and empowered administration and professor ramasamy has also pointed out about the digital transformation thanks to covid 19 in a very short period of time and he has rightly concluded about the concept of future shock our institutions should be future ready for 24 into 7 learning reaching any any learner any time anywhere so that way the topic is very relevant which has been dealt very thoroughly very authentically by the speaker and so that way i am very much grateful to you sir and i take this opportunity to convey my profound sense of gratitude to the speaker for uh, delivering a very profound lecture on a very vital topic a very significant topic and i am sure this message will be very relevant not only for just a webinar purpose for implementation purpose that is the most important thing whatever programs we conduct the most important thing is that it should be contributing to implementation application so that way your lecture is application oriented and i once again take this opportunity to thank you and i also uh, hope that we will be having your expertise uh, in the programs to come uh, in the years to come for the development of the central university of tamil nadu thank you sir thank you once again and i also take this opportunity uh, words are not sufficient to thank our chancellor who is so generous as such a big person yeah an iconic figure i used to call him uh, 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 chancellor of chancellors vice chancellor of vice chancellors teacher of teachers so such a big person so simple uh, so unassuming and that way we are very fortunate to have such an erudite scholar as our chancellor and it is our privilege that uh, we could have his august presence in this solemn occasion and i also take this opportunity to thank our chancellor for joining us and gracing us in this occasion and i take this opportunity to record my appreciation for the coordinator of the decennial lecture series professor madhurima who has been effectively organizing all these programs and that way uh, she is doing a very good work and i will be filing in my duty to record my appreciation if i file to record my appreciation for her wonderful contribution i also take this opportunity to thank all our colleagues all our faculty members all our officers all our staff for making this program a grand success thank you very much thank you one and all thank you thank you ramasamy thank you <laughs> marvel and madhurima it's been a pleasure to be here and uh a new one thing is clear it will be a new normal even if we get back to so called normality correct it will be a new normal correct but my only appeal to tiruvallur is you know it is actually a rural university in the sense how would all these exciting changes which the vice chancellor and also professor ramasamy mentioned how it will reach these people the rural community very difficult <laughs> so that is where the biggest challenge correct to my mind there has to be you no know, i am a hardcore scientist um, in that way physical sciences but there is a large scope for research in education sector itself in my opinion how to deliver you know that itself will be a big big very big challenge how to deliver knowledge to people technologies are okay but we know you know i see even children commit suicide because they can't uh, log on to the course 
you know, they, their PC is not good enough or bandwidth is not adequate. So these are good. I mean, Ramsamy pointed out all these challenges. There are huge challenges. And of course, personally, as an old man, I feel, you know, nothing like personal connection. If you don't see individuals in face to face, you know, these days people don't even invite you. They will send you an email. You know, in those days, you know, for everything, you know, we have a culture. I somehow feel eventually culture may take a new format. You don't even see people. Already cell phone is happening, you know, <laughs> everything is on the images. You handshake through the images, you know, you don't even personally do. That's a different aspect altogether. But in education, I think there are a lot going to be lots of challenges. As both of you rightly said, it will be a hybrid system. I hope it will be a hybrid system. Therefore, I know there are uh, people in Boston University told me they have a uh, uh, hybrid system. There are few courses, it seems there are people uh, who are asked to attend. That number will be very small. Whereas they cater to a very large number of people through the E system. So that is why I, I feel we are in for a new normal. And I think uh, we have to be prepared. All, my, all you people have to be prepared. Our time is more or less over. But uh, it is important, you know, children get the benefit. The young people of, you know, they are the future of the country. So how would, how would education reach them? What technology? They, in India, we are way back, really speaking. You know, many times we talk of many things. And you go to the reality. Uh, you know, it's not virtual reality, honest reality. If you go and see... People are very, very, you know, not, not knowledgeable. How would they catch up? And there is a big, very big challenge to <clears throat> bring them on board. If somebody is able to put a signature, it doesn't matter. It does not, doesn't mean they are qualified or educated. So we have a basic challenge there and already the system is changing. So I was feeling that there probably there will be a new normal even in research. Some of the areas of research will change in my opinion. New questions will be asked. As I said, how do you reach technologies in education to reach the people? What are all the strategies? Maybe there are brilliant ideas, you know, to, to make uh, even uh, people in rural uh, people uh, have access to it. Already, you know, things become very, you know, anyway, I don't want to give a lecture, but it was a very nice, very nice lecture to hear from Dr. Ramaswamy and to see him after a long time. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I will, I will take Thank leave. You. Thank, Bye. You. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you one and all for joining us on this distinguished lecture for today. And uh, please uh, join us the next time we have our episode. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.